Welcome back to the King's Corner, the place for all things Bethesda. I am the King Fan Man with another Fallout 76 Tips video. And if you love Fallout and you're not a subscriber yet to the King Fan Man channel, why not? I talk about Fallout all the time on this channel, so go ahead, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell too, so you'll be notified every time I upload a video. And if you like the content that I do, please leave a like because it really helps YouTube to share my videos and it certainly helps my channel. So I would really appreciate that. So with all that said, let's jump right into the video. Today we're going to be talking about making workshops faster, easier, and more efficient. And our main subject is going to be workshop blueprints because if you think about it, you do the same thing every time you gain a workshop. You claim the workshop and you normally put down the same things. Everybody has the same routine when you claim the workshop. You probably put down a stash box. Whatever your routine is, you normally put down the same thing at every workshop. You put down turrets, whatever it is. You go through the same routine at every workshop. And normally you have about a minute or two before you have to defend that workshop. And you have to get rid of the junk that you have on you, the weapons that you have on you. You have to scrap, you have to fix your weapons, you have to do all that you have to do in that two minute time limit. Well, let's make that much more efficient starting with the workshop blueprint. Now, most people that play Fallout 76 are familiar with camp blueprints. Well, it's the same idea, but you can use it also in workshops. Well, if you're not familiar with camp blueprints, it's simply a design that you build and save so that you can use it later. So you can design any kind of structure with any kind of components, any kind of crafting tables. You design it and lay it out any way that you want it. You save it and then you can use it over and over and over. And I'm going to walk you through the process here and it works so well and so efficiently and then I'm going to show you some other tips so stand by. First let me say right off the bat there is no right or wrong way to design one of these. It is all preference so I'm just going to show you how I lay mine out it's however you want to do it. It's whatever you prefer to be in yours. So I'm just going to show you how I lay mine out. I hope you get some good ideas off mine. Then you tweak yours however you like yours to be. But I hope you get some good ideas off mine. That's what a tips video is for. Obviously, you want to start with the basic structure, your floor and your walls. And you want to get your basic structure done first your floor your walls and I want to say right off the bat that you need at least two different sizes so you need at least two blueprints and the reason I say this you need at least one small structure make yourself make one small structure as small as you can make it because there are some workshops out there that have very very small space to put a blueprint down so I have one blueprint that is very small and I'll show you it still has what I need it still has a weapons workbench it still has a bed and it still has a stash box in it. it still has an instrument it still has turrets but it is small it just has the basics so I have one large and one small make yourself make that small structure but now this is where you get to decide what you want to put in your blueprint now what I think is necessary you may not think is necessary I always put a weapons workbench a stash box a scrap box since I'm a fallout first player I put a bed and I put an instrument if I'm making a big structure I also put a chemistry station because every workstation has things like gold and crystal things that you're going to be smelting well you need a chemistry station to do smelting I also put a sink from the atomic shop so I can make food then I put turrets on top there's also another very important thing that I recommend and it is a fast travel mat now these are found in the miscellaneous structures all the way at the end of the workshop menu and these are wonderful you can put them down anywhere you want in your workshop blueprint and that's where you will fast travel to when you come back to your workshop 
This is very important. When your workshop is under attack, you will know exactly where you will come back to. I like to put mine either inside my structure or on top of my structure is my favorite one so I can see the enemies that are coming in. So I definitely recommend the fast travel mat. That is something most people overlook. And let me show you how I design the top of my larger structures. And I've even been doing my smaller structures this way. You may have noticed some stairs going up. That is so I can get to the roof quickly. And that is where I put my fast travel mat. That is a easy defense place. That's so I can defend my workshop. Now you may not want the turrets so you can get the XP. If you want all the XP, don't put the turrets on there. See, that's a good thing to think about. If you want to kill all the enemies yourself to get all the XP, don't put turrets on there. Just something else to think about. Now, another great thing to put on these, if you have room, and I have made room, is the scavenger bot. Now, these were made free by Bethesda at Christmas. I hope you made use of that and got the Christmas, the Santa bot, whatever it was called, because after Christmas it turned into the scavenger bot. And now it gets junk, which it gets springs, it gets screws, it gets ballistic fiber, it gets all kinds of things. You can put it at your camp, but you can also put it at any workshop. So every workshop you get, put one down. That is just extra screws, extra springs, extra ballistic fiber. Put it down. Well, if you already have it on your blueprint, as soon as you put it down, we're talking about efficiency here, as soon as you put that blueprint down, he starts working. You don't have to think about it. You'll never forget it. It automatically starts working, so make it a part of your blueprint. You'll never forget it again at any workshop. Now, one little tip I can give you about the scavenger bot. Some people, <clears throat> Ghost, does not like him roaming around in the workshop. So you can actually confine him to your blueprint and he will still gather things. So you don't have to actually have him roaming around your camp or roaming around your workshop to have him gather things. So that's just a little tip for you, not only in your workshop, but also in your camp. So if you're tired of your scavenger bot roaming around, you can actually pin him up and he still will gather things all the same. So there's a free tip both for your workshop and for your camp. So if you actually want to pin him up on your blueprint, you can. Now, as I said before, there are many different designs that you can do. I'm still playing around with the designs. Here are a couple of other designs. These are not mine. These are ghost designs that I asked her to send me that uh, she's been playing around with. But uh, these are two of her designs. So I just wanted to show you these are two more ideas that you can look at. But again, there are no right or wrong ideas when it comes to blueprints for the workshops. Anything that you can take from these and use, please feel free. Again, that's what a tips video is for. This one is called her house build, and you could probably tell that by the design, but it's a very cool looking design. Now, as I said in the beginning, most of you are probably familiar with blueprints, but those of you that don't know, let me go over quickly how to save a blueprint it's super easy so don't be intimidated by it at all it's just a couple of buttons you got to hit and you've got your blueprint saved once you get your structure just the way you want it you literally only have two buttons to push to blueprint your workshop structure just like I told you it's super easy now whether you're on PS4 PC or Xbox it really doesn't matter because it's going to tell you at the bottom of the screen what buttons you have to push I'm gonna be telling you based off of an Xbox controller as you see at the bottom of my screen it tells you first to hold down on the a button to blueprint now that's one item I just happen to be hovering over the staircase so you start with one item 
I hold it down, it first turns blue, then it turns white, so that one item is blue printed. That's the way you want to start. Then, if you notice, it gives you the option to blueprint the whole structure. And you do that with the left bumper. Now, that's with the Xbox controller. It will tell you what to do if you're using the PS4 or the PC. Now, this is important. If your whole structure does not turn white, like mine just did, that means your structure is too large. Your workshop budget is not quite as large as your camp budget, so you're going to have to take a few items out. But if your whole structure turns white, then that means all you have to do now is name your structure and save it. So now hit X and it will send you to the screen that has the place for you to name your structure. After you type in the name of your structure and it will show you the button to save with or you can just press enter. And you've got it. It is now blueprinted and it gives you the space to blueprint several. Look at, look at all those blueprint spaces that you have. Now you know how to blueprint a workshop structure. One last workshop tip before we get out of here. This is something that I've been doing for quite a while at workshop. Instead of running power connectors between the resource drops, I actually run water purifiers between the drops when there's a distance between them and I actually hook them all together with water purifiers. They work just the same as the power connectors do but yet you're getting purified water. In fact, you can run a whole workshop on a nuclear generator with water purifiers between all of the resource drops and then have all of that purified water to either sell or use. It is a wonderful way to run your workshops. And then you have all of those resources from all of the resource drops, from your scavenger bot, and from the water purifiers. You talk about an efficient workshop when it's run that way. If you will take those tips and run, just take over a couple of workshops and run it blueprinted and water purified like that, that is an efficient way to get a lot of resources. And hey, to the new Fallout 76 players out there, every time you take over a workshop or defend a workshop, you get a new plan. So workshops are definitely worth your time. Keep doing workshops. I am the King Fan Man. I hope you've enjoyed these tips, but most of all, I hope they've helped you out just a little bit. Y'all be sure and check all my links down below and keep hashtagging those pictures with a hashtag King Fan Man because I want to use your favorite Fallout 76 pics in my video. And all you have to do is put a hashtag King Fan Man on them that way I can find them on your favorite social media, whether it's Facebook or Twitter. And by the way, follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook as well. And if you have a little bit of extra dough and you want to be a partner of the King Fan Man, you want to help me out, you go check out my Patreon. I am the King Fan Man. I will see you guys out in the waste of West Virginia. Y'all stick around for these awesome Fallout 76 picks right now. Bye, guys. Thank you.